All right, what is up guys? I'm out at the uh, boat yard, boat storage, whatever you want to call it, jet ski storage. I don't know. You can see uh, I got, I'm over at the ski. Oh, and I'm wearing my brand new Macho Man Randy Savage shirt from uh, Pro Wrestling Tee. I'm not sponsored, don't you worry. I'm not that big yet. Uh, but I'm out here with the uh, pump or build pump and we're gonna get to work on getting this installed real quick. Uh, this isn't really gonna be a how-to because I don't even know what I'm doing just quite yet. So uh, hopefully uh, the this video will come out and you can watch it and you can be like, oh, that guy's not an idiot and I'll follow what he did. So let's get to it. So I make the removal of the uh, top deck plate pretty easy by getting this uh, uh, T30 Torx bit. It tears or pulls all these out really easy. So uh, the only ones that suck are these front two. If you've ever worked on uh, the GTX or the RXTX uh, model from like 2018 and newer, you know that in Sea-Doo's infinite wisdom, they put uh, all these are captive, except for these, these have uh, nuts on the end of them I think they're 10 millimeter but they suck and also I uh, totally was gonna put it in one of my other videos um, I did a oil change video but half the uh, half the footage got corrupted so that was really really cool but anyways uh, definitely buy some extra of these because um, with you pulling it in and out they kind of can get worn or you're uh, you drop them down in, in one of the holes this is not for gas by the way uh, it even says right here no fuel so every every sign everywhere is because someone else made a mistake at some point but no fuel anyways let me get uh, the tools for this last little bit and we'll be good to go So now that we have the uh, cover off or the seats off and the uh, back plate off, we are exposed to everything. So you can see it comes off this uh, rear baler, which mounts down in there. So we'll probably have to move this hose just over a tiny bit to squeeze it in, but you can see where it mounts right up. And then we'll have to wire it up into the fuse box. And it looks like it should be pretty easy to slip it around and up through. So obviously we want to route the wiring on the intake side up into the fuse box. Uh, you wouldn't want to do it on this side. I would have a bad feeling about uh, melting if you were to put it on the exhaust side. But yeah, and in case you see like on here, it looks a little bit... Uh, um, almost like oily that's the XPS uh, fluid protectant obviously once we're done in here we'll uh, apply a bit more but you can see another shot of right there that's where it mounts into this bailing wire right here so we'll get at it and uh, yeah should be pretty easy so I know I got it at a weird angle right now, but first thing you want to do is make sure you take off this little filter that sits on the bottom of the uh, pump itself. So we'll do that, put it off to the side, then we'll pull the baler hose. You can see that one's, uh, looks like it's zip tied. To that position but see uh, it's out now this guy should just fit right in there yeah 
right, let me undo the wiring so I can get that out of the way. All right. I don't know how easy that is to see, but you can see it's sitting in the uh, in the mount for it. Uh, and then inside the kit, there is, you got this little package, which the thing we're going for right now is the retaining, uh, retaining strap, this uh, piece right here. And the retaining strap is, looks like you have to pull it up through the bottom up through the bottom around the top and then this might be a little difficult but we'll get it Yep, that's seated. Let me go from the other angle. Boom. That's pretty easy. You can see that the strap comes up from the aft side and goes towards the front uh, side. Now you can take that bailing hose Slip it back on. I gotta dry off my hands, they're all greasy. All right. Well, So I put it on the first time and it was kinked up a little bit. So um, let's see if I can't reset it a little bit so that it's not kinked. There is a zip tie I can fill for this baler hose up on the back side. If I pull it down a little bit, can I get the radius I need? No. Well, if I don't really want to cut it because if for whatever reason I ever have to go back to stock, I don't want to have to replace all the tubing, but it looks like this segment does end right there. So it wouldn't be too crazy. see if I can't back this off just a little bit. Maybe that helps. I really don't want to cut it, but... Well, maybe I just got it. All right, cool. Well, shoot. Let me show you guys. So we got it mounted. And then you can see it curves up and there's a 90 degree piece over there. So just sliding it back, you get it where it's not kinked up at all. I don't know how well that will show, uh, show up in the video, but because I'm kind of shooting in the dark. But yeah, there we go. Uh, so now that it's sitting in there, I'm gonna take the small zip tie uh, that is provided with the kit uh, and put it around the hose.
Cool. Okay, so now we got that in place. Now we're gonna feed the the uh, ground and the power to the to the Ford or to the Ford up forward to the um, to the fuse box right here, um, and we'll just slide it like I said. Over on the intake side, so it should be pretty easy to get over. Uh, but I'm gonna slide it underneath these, and uh, so it's out of the way. Cool. All right, guys. So my the camera was running kind of low on battery, so I just uh, routed it uh, through. You can see I'm um, uh, using my hand to wiggle the cord. Routed it through on the intake side. Uh, and then I'll just keep it like that off to the side um, and I'm not gonna zip tie it down until I have put it into the uh, fuse panel so I pulled the fuse panel obviously pull the top off first and then uh, there's like rubber uh, bungs in there I don't know the right word but basically they're just to stop from moisture and whatever from getting into to the ski and uh, you're gonna uh, pop out the one in between these two 30 amp fuses and the one uh, immediately above this 15 amp fuse right there um, so yeah that should be pretty easy I got my picks um, in my truck so let me grab them and I'll pop them out so I got my scribe pick whatever you prefer to call it try to catch the rubber pieces as they come out. I got one. Didn't drop it. It's caught in the wire bundle. But I know I will drop it. <laughs> Alright, now it's just disappeared into the ether. I have no idea where that went. It's probably in the bottom of the hall. If it's okay for JP Racing, it's okay for me. He did the same thing on his video. Anyways, uh, so that has that open now. So let's, uh, I think the easiest will be the ground. So let's grab the wiring. Black round. Got the ground in. Now, let's see for the power. It's the second one down and second one over. So. camera off real quick because I gotta swear all right all it took was saying a couple curse words and I got it in you can see the that it's seated right there and you can see the ground is seated so we'll set this back up over here and then I'll grab the uh, supplied equipment we'll start off with the ground this guy right here, the three prong. Boom, easy day. And then to power, which is this three amp fuse. All right. All right, 
moment put the fuse box back in place and I'm gonna grab the uh, key real quick and you should hear it turn on boom you can hear it so that's good you can hear it priming if I had a water bottle or something I might even throw a little water down there but uh, don't put any water in your sea dew it sounds like a bad idea but yeah I'm happy with that so you can see that goes back in now we just got to uh, route these up so that they're out of the way uh, and we should be golden all right cool all right so we're pretty much finished up here i have my bilge pump installed i have the wiring from the bilge up through here well i'll get some more zip ties and make it a little bit nicer and then i have it hugging underneath the uh, little plastic cover here let me take that off so i have it hugging underneath here and then it goes down and it mounts onto the bracket that I actually have the SCOM on and then underneath to the uh, fuse box. So pretty easy install. I think it took me, uh, including filming, just over an hour. So if you're not filming and you actually know what you're doing, maybe by watching this video, uh, you, you should take a lot less time. But uh, yeah, this is a mod that I was pretty excited to do. Um, pretty easy and pretty cheap. A little bit of insurance, especially since in my last video I said that I'd be uh, running in the ocean a little bit more, which I have done a lot. All right, guys, I was monologuing about riding in the ocean and, uh, and my camera turned off, so I figured I would just uh, finish it off with actually talking to the camera instead of talking at the camera. Though I guess I'm still technically talking at a camera. Um, but I, I'm really excited that this went as easily as it did. Um, and I'm really, I, I mean, I'm super happy. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, I know a lot of you have been joking about like see don't or, you know, sink do or whatever. And I actually find those jokes kind of funny because I'm not a huge sea do brand guy. I like sea do. I got sea do because it's the one that I liked. I mean, there wasn't, uh, a ton available there wasn't a ton of options but i mean look the purple's beautiful though with that being said ha uh have you guys seen the new rxpx and the new rxtx it's uh black on black on black jet black it looks stealth like a like a bomber like a stealth bomber it looks so good i can't wait to see one of those in person and who knows maybe uh maybe i get another another ski jet black sounds pretty cool anyways that's enough for today um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I try my best to answer every single comment. Uh, I appreciate the, the views. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate you taking time to watch my simple channel. Just doing my thing. Anyways, I'm going to bolt up everything and I'm going to go take it out for a spin. Oh yeah, and before I button up, any time that I have an excuse to take the top cover off, I always uh, spray down with either fluid film or uh, XPS because I ride solely in salt water. So I want to keep this as free of corrosion as possible. Don't have to lather it on, just enough to cover the metal bits. So that when you take it off, you don't have a whole load of corrosion. Pretty easy.